Welcome to the Junk Rig Association's series of interviews with junk rig sailors. Patrick LeBlanc bought his first junk rig boat recently in Glasgow, Scotland. Called China Blue, he sailed it to France. Here's his story. This, this boat was uh, advertised on the GRA uh, in, uh, 19, uh, in 2017, okay? Uh, it's been advertised in, uh, on the GRA site, website. And uh, at this time, as, as I explained on, the, on my own website, I, I didn't have the, 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 the time all the morning. I was still working. Uh, then uh, it was the last year, I just, wanted to, to see if this uh, this boat was still there and then and I contacted the owner and he said oh yes the boat is still for sale and uh, it, it was the only junk uh, rigged uh, uh, boat that I could find in Europe anyway th there was another one in south of France but it was too small and not uh, very seaworthy so I didn't have a choice. <laughs> And uh, so we agreed. Uh, we agreed on the price, and uh, but this was before the COVID situation. So uh, then uh, the COVID situation put a lot of uh, delays in in this uh, operation. Like if if it has been in any kind of boat, uh, like a, a, a Bermudan rig boat, uh, it's easy. You know, you can say, okay, I, I, if you don't agree with the price, I can go and have a look at another one. It's not a problem. There are plenty. There are hundreds of them for sale. But there was only this one uh, junk rig boat in uh, in Europe, in the whole Europe at the moment. So um, I was looking. I've been looking, but uh, I couldn't find any other. And anyway, the, I, I had been dreaming about this boat for a long time, but I, I just, uh, I had it on the, on the wallpaper on my, on my computer at work, you know? <laughs> so uh, I, had to, I had to, I had to do it. The, the owner of the boat uh, came, to get, came, came to fetch me in the evening. And we went to the shipyard, and, and the first time I saw the boat, I was I was very excited, and uh, I, I I admit I didn't see all the flows until really um, spending time on the boat and, and using the boat because when I ju just saw the boat, the hull was uh, perfect, the hull was very clean, nothing to say. Uh, the propeller was very nice, very clean, and. Um, I must say the engine was in very good condition and is still in very good condition. As for the rest, uh, I, I really didn't see the, the, the flows. I was, uh, for me, it was the, like a, a dream coming true, you know, so uh, I, I, everything that was wrong, I, I was thinking, oh, I will fix it or it's going to be fixed. And many things were missing on the boat, like the, the VHF, like uh, the, the chart plotter. Uh, I've had a, I've had a boat. It was a, on, on a trailer. It was a twenty-three feet uh, Dufour, Dufour T7. It's a center cockpit, uh, seven meters long. And it was on the trailer, and uh, so in the summer, uh, I would trail it to Normandy or Brittany or La Rochelle or Mediterranean. The max, the longest sails I've made uh, was ten days, and every evening we were in the in the marina, you know, because my wife and I enjoyed doing that, you know, sailing during the day, then find the marina, go to the restaurant, you know, <laughs> that's holidays, you know. I've, I've never done much more than that, so I have a, I, I don't have a very long sailing uh, history. The day she arrived on the boat. Uh, she cried. She really cried, and it was a really, really uh, bad moment, you know, because I, I, I felt uh, ah, that's a failure, and you know, <laughs> she didn't like the boat, and uh, okay, but uh, we both agreed that, that we would do our best to 
to give it back uh, a nice, at least a more comfortable uh, interior, you know, uh, improve, the, improve the gully, improve the, the sleeping area, improve the, uh, the, the, the solution. We sailed down the, the Clyde River. We sailed down to um, uh, Troon. From Troon, we, we crossed over to Belfast, Bang Bangor. Bangor, yes. So from, from uh, Belfast, we sailed down to, um, to uh, Hoth Marina in, in, in Dublin. And then uh, Deuxième jour de navigation. Nous sommes partis de Troon pour aller à Bangor en Irlande du Nord, mais pour l'instant, on longe toujours la côte écossaise. Donc euh, voici après une longue journée de moteur, de moteur, de moteur et toujours de moteur, on arrive en vue de House, la marina qui se trouve près de Dublin. The idea was to continue sailing to the south of Ireland and, uh, and from, then, from there sail across to the Sea East Island and from there to Brittany. But um, my, my crewmate John, which is a guy I, I had never met before, uh, I, I found him on Crew Bay and uh, uh, we, we were friends at once, we understood each other, he's still a good friend now. He's, he's almost part of the family. <laughs> and uh, so he was supposed to leave us in Dublin and my wife was going to take over. But uh, uh, I had promised him I would bring him back to, to the mainland, to, to, to Wales, because it would make his travel back home much easier. Uh, also, we had met this uh, very nice couple uh, sailing on their boat and we had met them in uh, in Belfast and and we had met them again in in, um, in a house and we had uh, agreed to to go and visit them they lived in Carnarfon in, in Wales so that's why we went from Dublin to Carnarfon and then uh, in Carnar from Carnarfon we went down to I have to remember uh, the names <laughs> um, to uh, Pithel, uh, from from Pithelli, we went down to um, Aberystwyth, I think, at Aberystwyth. Then we went. Nous sommes à Carnarvon, au Pays de Galles. Un joli joli petit village, très très pittoresque, très touristique. C'est le matin. Voilà. On attend en se promenant, en regardant le paysage, parce que on arriverait trop tôt sinon pour l'ouverture des écluses. Donc on va attendre encore une heure, comme ça, à, à, à se promener, à tourner en rond. C'est très joli, pour une fois on a eu du soleil et quelques nuages, mais bon, pas très grave. No, uh, the thing is, we were. Uh, I uh, um, I was back with my crewmate because he, he he accepted to come back with me. So John John came back uh, to help me, and uh, we we were a strong team, you know. Uh, so we were confident in one another. Uh, sailing across the channel was uh, like a hundred nautical miles to La Uh our only concern was the traffic. Also, we didn't have to cross any TSS, but uh, we were very, um, we did take a lot of care of uh, watching around, looking around for the boats. We have a, a, an AIS um, transmitter. This would give us confidence also. But in fact, uh, because we did crossing at night, uh, there was a, a very little wind. So we could have, we had one sail, we had the four sail up. And we were motoring, so we were at about five, six knots all the time. The sea was nice. There was no fog. That was the main thing because that was I was I was fearing the most. 
So uh, really crossing the channel in that condition is nothing special. Uh, On est à la baraque, la baraque, la baraque, ça va casser. Dans la Bretagne, dans la Bretagne. Voilà, on est arrivé après une nuit, une longue nuit. So we are in la baraque, we after crossing the channel, uh, we used the motor, but we had the sail to help us go faster. And we went quite fast. We arrived at... Uh, 8, 8, 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Nous sommes arrivés. We are heading for the Le Four Channel. Our destination is Camaret sur Mer. On devrait être ce soir à Camaret, Camaret sur Mer. Uh, voilà. à gauche ils sont à droite et quand tu les regardes à droite ils sont à gauche donc j'arrête voilà souvenir du passage de la pointe du rat bon on va pas faire tout un film hein. here we are in the very charming little harbor of le palais on belle île belle île en mer ce soir nous sommes dans le joli petit port de belle île en mer le port du palais c'est we are uh, to do all the boats on the boats and none of those boats has access to the quay unless those who have a, a little tender ceux qui ont une annexe ils peuvent aller au restaurant ils peuvent aller au bistrot ils peuvent aller se promener se dégourdir les jambes et visiter la ville mais Karim et moi on va manger des nouilles ce soir we're gonna eat noodles tonight The big, the biggest problem for me is that the boat is, uh, is is very far away from me. It was okay with the small boat I had before, you know. Having the boat in front of your house is great because you can go work on it when you want. But now uh, the boat is far away. I have a, a, I keep a never, ever ending list of jobs to be done on the boat, and uh, I don't know when I will be able to go there. I think I have to wait until the weather gets better. No, I didn't. In fact, I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, all I knew, all I knew, all I believed is what I had been reading about Jen Griggs, and that's why I wanted the Jen Griggs uh, uh, I, about the ease of of use, the the, the facility, the simplicity, and uh, I, I must say I haven't uh, I haven't found everything. Um, exactly what I, I didn't find i didn't really find what i expected the one thing was sure is the the the, the, the simplicity for sure uh, like uh, raising the sails and uh, taking reefs very easy that's very straightforward that's really nothing to do with with what i was used before uh, even on my little precedent boat you know and where you have to go and face up to the wind and go up on deck etc So this is really great, really great, and uh, the, the, the way you can jibe with no, no drama, it's, it's, it's really fine. Uh, but I, I really didn't have any idea of how to adjust the sails, uh, how many panels I should put up, and uh, in, if I should uh, pull the sheet or release the sheet, you know. And uh, we found the we found the boat had a, a very much weather helm. And uh, the tiller was really hard. You, you had to hold the tiller with both arms, with both hands, in, in order to keep the boat on, on course. And uh, they, I, I've come up with new ideas, like uh, maybe ne not trying to put to haul all the sail. Uh, Eric says with three panels, you're fine. Uh, you're going to do the same speed, and the, the boat it will be easier to handle. For example, uh, I was thinking like on the on the pointy rig. Uh, I was thinking that uh, you could have a balance between the, the fore sail and the aft sail. Like if you put uh, much more fore sail, the boat would go downwind. And if, if you put much more 
after sale, the boat will go upwind. Uh, it doesn't ha seem to happen that way, and but I didn't I didn't know that uh, by the time. So I think uh, I will try now different uh, different um, sail adjustments, and also uh, use the use the front sail as a stabilizer. Uh, if you sheet it right hard and in the middle, uh, it can it could help the boat. Um, Stopping, stop from rolling from from side to side because we uh, we had a lot of that. Uh, but the main thing is uh, we had, as we had the schedule, we, we had to be on time uh, in the in in the marina. So we had we had a schedule of days to come back to France. So sometimes we had a schedule because of the of the tide. You know, if you want to be somewhere, you have to get the right tide and etc. The right current. So uh, you cannot just uh, set the sails and uh, let the wind take you wherever it wants, you know, or just stand by waiting for wind. So we've been motoring uh, really, really too much. And this, this was uh, very disappointing. Uh, um, the speed, we, we were happy when we were doing uh, over five knots under sail. Uh, this was, uh, I think, as long as we do five knots, I'm happy. You know, uh, the, the the problem is we had we we often had the, the swell from the from the side from a, from a beam, uh, like uh, most of them from the from the starboard side on the starboard side, and the boat was rolling and yawing, uh, making the ride very very uncomfortable, and especially when we crossed from a uh, from uh, Dublin to Wales, the sea was bad, and uh, at one point we we had to to change course and head straight into the wind, straight into the swell, uh, because we were too early to enter the Carnarvon uh, bar. We had to, we had two hours to, to waste, so we couldn't just hang around. It was really impossible and my wife was sick, you know, <laughs> it was not a pleasant ride. So we decided to go into the, to sail uh, right into the wave and uh, it, it was much much com more comfortable. Uh, I, I could feel the the hull was uh, smashing into the waves. Was uh, it, it, it's the the boat it had a big feeling of safety. Uh, the the hull seems like it's indestructible, you know. Uh, and, uh, and then going down, going down the waves uh, was was much more quieter as long as you could keep the boat. Uh, in, in the in the good direction, but as soon as you as we uh, took our course back uh, with the waves on the side, then it was again starting to to uh, move in all direction and pitching and rolling and yawing, you know. And this this I I didn't know, but I should have used one of the sails uh, to try to steady the boat, and keep it from rolling too much. And I still need to experiment a lot uh, with this boat. In France, uh, there were two two parts, two two uh, main uh, challenges. Is uh, the first was uh, uh, Ch uh, Chenal du Four, Chenal du Ch uh, the Four Channel. I think the people who sail to France from Brittany they know this uh, this area, and uh, we had it completely wrong. <laughs> we, we tried to figure out uh, with the uh, with the uh, with the tide uh, tables and the current uh, charts uh, from leaving Labrador uh, what was the best time, but uh, some somehow we got it all wrong. I think because we we spent too much time looking for wind, you know, and uh, taking our time. So we had to motor in the, the Channel du Four and maximum motor speed and sails because we had the wind with us and we had the, the, the current totally opposed to us, maybe four or five knots of current. So we were only uh, sailing uh, one, two knots. So it was a long, <laughs> it was a long sail. <laughs> In Camaré, we, we had the, we had the luck to talk with uh, another very nice couple we met there on their boat and uh, they gave us very good advices on uh, what time to leave in order to 
in order to, to round the Pointe du Rat, uh, le, we call it in French, le Rat de Saint. It's another, in, an, another uh, iconic place. The, the Brittany people call that uh, their, their own little uh, home cave, you know. And uh, because they gave us a very good advice, uh, we had uh, we, we passed this very very fast. We had the uh, four knots of currents with us, and it's been like a poof. <laughs> it's it's been a very nice sail. What I what I re remember now is always talk to the people, uh, talk to the people in the marina and and ask advice. Don't only rely on your own uh, confidence. Uh, as I told you, I didn't have a choice because the, it was the only boat available. But also, uh, knowing that it was in Scotland uh, was very appealing because uh, it was it was to be a fantastic uh, sail, you know. And uh, I, w I was really looking forward to to it, you know, because I've been reading, reading, reading so much about sailing. Uh, I've been watching so many videos. I spend my time on YouTube watching videos of people who sail and cross portions and, and all this. And I was longing to do something like that. And now, uh, okay, I'm into it. <laughs> Articulated buttons, you call that, um, but hinged buttons. Yes, uh, they're, they're aluminum, uh, I think they're aluminum buttons. I didn't really know how to how to operate them, you know. All I, all I did was uh, raise the sail, hold it up, and then uh, pull the sheet sheet in, and uh, and you know, like now I know that I, one of the things I would do is put some telltale uh, ribbons at the end of the buttons, so I can know uh, what is a good position uh, for 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 having the best the best efficiency and the, and the less healing of the boat. Because if they are sheeted too hard, then the boat will start to heal and then it will start to go upwind and uh, this is what we've been fighting with uh, a, a lot a lot on the way down and, and, and. You know, so otherwise uh, uh, the, the problem was the all the lines were very old uh, like the, the parallels were were very old and very stiff you know and uh, they were getting tangled and uh, so I got rid of them and I and I had this uh, I, I bought some new lines and I made them different colors, so uh, so as to remember, because they are uh, they are three uh, howling uh, three parallels. One is howling the This I, I know it moves the sail back and forth, but I don't really know <laughs> what to do with that. Uh, what is the correct way to to adjust them? You know, and I would really like to have uh, somebody uh, sail sail with me on China Blue and uh, like somebody with good experience. And of course, when I arrived in Subiz. Uh, I had never been there before, but uh, my friends were, were waiting for me. My wife was waiting for me, so it was a big moment. <laughs> it was a very big moment. And there was no wind, but I put the sail up just because I wanted. <laughs> ah, là, j'ai tenu à garder une voile en haut pour qu'on nous reconnaisse bien, et puis parce que après tout, China Blue mérite d'arriver avec ses couleurs. I wanted to keep one sail up because this way will be recognized easily and I thought China Blue deserved to have to enter her final destination with her own colors. China Blue qui sort de l'eau. Deux mois plus tard. Oui, deux mois plus tard, oui. 
<rire> comme tu dis, deux mois plus tard. Tout ça pour ça. <rire> Tout ça pour ça. <rire> The Junk Rig Association aim to promote the rig and provide easily accessible and relevant material to people interested in it. Visit us at www.junkrigassociation.org